Hello, psychology students. Hopefully you're having a great day or evening, wherever you may be, and welcome to another video lecture. Uh, this time we're going to talk about heredity disorders. Uh, sometimes things can go wrong, and we're going to look at some of the common factors associated with those. So let's go to our slides here. Okay, so let's take a look here. So what we're going to look at is heredity disorders. Turns out that many disorders, diseases can be traced to problems with the chromosomes or genes. And so we're going to look at uh, both of those in different lectures. So this is why it's so important for couples to get genetic counseling, especially if you know you have a family history of a particular genetic problem. Uh, in your family. Some people don't want to know, and I understand that. Maybe they just want fate to kind of decide the health of their child, but it's always nice to be informed. So if you know you have this history in your family of some kind of problem, it would make sense to be prepared before that child comes and, and, and look at the odds of that. So I'm just kind of throwing that out there. You obviously can make up your own mind uh, if, you want, if you want to go with that or not. Let's get into uh, chromosomal disorders. So here, what we're saying is that the problem lies in the chromosomes themselves. Obviously, it's tied to genetics as well. But typically with these, there's some kind of issue with the chromosome, whether uh, you know, it could be one, they have an extra chromosome. For example, we mentioned that humans and most cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46. So maybe they have 47 or an extra member of a pair, for example. Or maybe one of the chromosomes is damaged, for example, and that can create some issues, which we're going to talk about. Okay, so here we're saying that it's more of a chromosomal issue rather than strictly inheritance. However, it can be tied to that as well. You know, it could be damage to the DNA. Uh, it could happen by chance, for example. However, we know that a lot of these issues that we're going to talk about can be traced to the age of the parents. So, in other words, older parents have a higher incidence of a lot of these of happening in particular, uh, some particular disorders that we're gonna talk about. For example, we know that older eggs and sperm have a greater likelihood of damaged DNA, and that could explain why. All right, so let's get into some of these. First one we're gonna talk about is Down syndrome. And by the way, this is the most common genetic cause of intellectual disability in Down syndrome. And this particular one is caused by having an extra chromosome, and that's the 21st pair to be more specific. So we think it's a deviation of the 21st pair of chromosomes, and in most cases they have three. Uh, so rather than uh, two in the pair, they have three chromosomes. The cause of this is not completely known. There are theories out there and, and other explanations, but the cause is not completely known. However, we know it's related to the age of the mother. For example, according to some research, if, if you are under 30, you have a 1 in 1,700 chance of having a Down syndrome child, where if you're over 45, just looking at the other extreme here, you have 1 in 30 chance. And get this, if you're age 50 or higher, you have a 1 in 10 chance. So did you guys understand that? So from one in 1,700 to one in 10, depending on your age. So we know uh, that typically this happens with older parents. It has some classic symptoms. In fact, you can often look at a child who's Down syndrome and know based on certain physical characteristics. So for example, they tend to have a stocky stature, small hands, uh, classic facial deformities, so for example, they may have droopy eyelids, a large tongue, for example. Um, it's often associated with being mentally challenged, an Alzheimer's type condition, heart problems. So it's definitely associated with a lot of hardcore things uh, that are not good, unfortunately. But the great news is, and by the way, these are the cutest kids. I've actually had the pleasure of working with these uh, when I was in college as a substitute teacher. Um, just fun to be around, just a love, you know, I had really good experiences with Down syndrome children. But anyway, the point is, is that there are special ed programs for Down syndrome, which is great. So we can actually 
uh, do things in the, in the classroom and beyond to help them function and to live a somewhat normal life. In fact, many uh, adults with Down syndrome hold jobs and have their own place, for example. So they can actually be pretty high functioning uh, with specialized services and so forth. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about is Klinefelter syndrome. It turns out that typically this is not diagnosed until adulthood. It's not always the case, but that's what the, the research is showing. And it's a problem with the sex chromosomes. If you guys have been reading the chapter and looking at the lectures, the sex chromosomes are the X and the Y, for example. Okay, so a lot of times they'll have an extra X chromosome. So if you look on the left there, we see a normal male with the XY pattern, where with Klinefelter, it could be what we call an XXY um, pattern. And so this, as you see on the slide there, it's associated with being tall, uh, narrow shoulders, something called gynomastia, which is the development of breasts, which can be surgically removed, uh, small testes, and it's also associated with infertility. So as you can see, it is associated with some problems, unfortunately. So what we're saying here is that it's mainly due to that extra X chromosome and the uh, problems connected to that situation. Okay, so next we go to XYY syndrome. So XYY syndrome, uh, before we get to Turner's syndrome, excuse me, uh, basically means that they have an extra Y chromosome, as you can see there. So what we're finding here with XYY is that they tend to be aggressive. Uh, they tend to grow extremely fast due to that extra Y chromosome. Uh, so once again, just another condition associated with having an extra chromosome. Okay, now we're gonna to get to Turner syndrome. And so with this particular condition, we're looking at females who have what we call an XO pattern. XO meaning they're lacking an X chromosome. Okay, so in this case, they're actually missing a chromosome, more specifically the second X in the females. In most cases, they'll show symptoms by age five. And some of our symptoms are having a short stature or secondary sexual features. It's connected to reproductive problems. And uh, another symptom, a physical symptom associated sometimes with, with Turner syndrome is having a webbed neck. So you can see that in the, the graphic there. Uh, sometimes there's a webbed neck associated with that. Okay, our next one we're gonna talk about is called Fragile X Syndrome, which really kind of is self-explanatory. So Fragile X Syndrome basically means where the one of the X chromosomes in this particular case appears fragile, almost as if it's about to break off. So you can see there at the bottom of the chromosome that it looks as if it's about to sort of break off here. This particular syndrome is connected to learning disabilities. It's also connected to language and speech delays, which is obviously a big reason we're concerned with this. So we would see problems in school, uh, which is you know, disheartening to kind of think about a child going through that. Uh, typically this is, uh, it can be present in male and females, but they're usually male. As it turns out, it's usually a male child, but not always, okay? So that will kind of wrap up uh, this short little lecture here. So as you can see, there are several problems connected to the chromosomes themselves, whether having one extra or missing one, depending on the case. So we see a lot of uh, different situations connected to that, all right? In our next video lecture, we're going to explore problems with genetics themselves, things that are more strictly inherited rather than being attributed to the chromosome themselves, okay? So stay tuned for that and please progress to the next lecture.